Suppose there are different cases. In one case, you have a cation on a zero degree carbon. So when you have a cation on zero degree carbon, then there is no stabilizing effect operating on this carbon. Solvent has broken the substrate into a cationic uh, form and a anionic form, which is the leaving group. If a solvent breaks substrate like this, such that the plus charge, the half which is carrying the plus charge is methyl carbocation, then this is not formed even at elevated temperature as I have told you before. If you have one degree carbocation, then at least there is hyperconjugation with three hydrogens. At least there is inductive effect of one methyl. So there is some stabilizing effect operating in one degree. In zero degree you have nothing. There is no inductive effect even, there is no hyperconjugation, nothing. When you have 2 degree, when you have 2 degree carbocation, then there are inductive effect from both the sides. So you have hyperconjugation with more number of hydrogen ions. So if this, if, if it is the, this kind of 2 degree ion, then there will be hyperconjugation with 6 carbon hydrogen bonds. So 6 hydrogen will operate in hyperconjugation, here 3 will operate and here none will operate. If you have even the higher degree, then the number of hydrogen participating in hyperconjugation will be yet higher. So in this case you have, if you have in this kind of 3 degree carbocation, we have 9 hyperconjugating structures or we have 9 CH bonds that participate in hyperconjugation. So it's generally it's the general rule that as the degree of carbon increases then the number of hyperconjugating structures or number of CH bonds that is participating in hyperconjugation will also increase so this is a general rule of thumb that as the degree of carbon will increase the rate of SN1 reaction will also increase so in other terms this hindrance in SN2 we, we, we were calling it hindrance now here this is not a hindrance because this is not hindering the rate of reaction in fact this is concerting the rate of reaction this is making the rate of reaction more and more as the hindrance actually this is not hindrance as the degree of the carbon will increase in SN2 it was a hindrance because this methyl groups were hindering the new in incoming electrophile to put its electron into, into the antibonding here it's not a hindrance because this methyl groups are actually stabilizing this plus charge this carbocation so there here the higher degree is helpful in SN2 the higher degree was not helpful that was combating the rate of reaction and mitigating the rate of reaction so here when the degree of carbon increases the SN1 rate will increase because there will be more stabilizing effects now the rule the only rule is more the stable carbocation more stable more will be the rate of reaction and it is general observation that as the degree of the carbon increases then of course there will be more hyperconjugating structures there will be more amount of inductive effect hence the stability will increase so we see that as degree of carbon increases rate of SN1 increases but in some cases this may be this rule may be proved to be futile or even fatal suppose you have Suppose we have a, a group like this where the plus charge is on this carbon and tertiary butyl are the three groups attached to this carbon then there is no hyperconjugation operating on this plus charge. As you can see that the carbon to which this carbon having plus charge is attached to they are not having any kind any hydrogen this is CC bond and CC bond do not operate in hyperconjugation so if there is no rearrangement of this carbocation then carbocation in this form even though it is 3 degree carbocation still it do not have any hyperconjugating structure so the amount of stability that we, will, we would be expecting out of a 3 degree carbocation will not be met in this case because there will be is there is no hyperconjugation so but in 99% case this rule will operate because when you have 3 degree carbocation then the amount of hyperconjugation will also increase and hence if the, if the degree increases the stability increases and the other factor would remain as the same if the nucleophilicity increases 
then the rate of reaction will not increase as much as it would increase in SN2 because in the RDS of SN1 you don't have a nucleophile then the fourth factor would be leaving group and RDS of the SN1 you do have a leaving group so if the leaving ability of the group increases the rate of reaction will increase now let's summarize these factors and compare them in case of SN1 and SN2 in case of SN1 and SN2 let's talk about degree degree of the carbon at which the attack is going to take place or the degree of the carbon at which the living group is attached so in case of SN1 and in case of SN2 now for in case of SN2 this is a hindrance because if the degree increases then it will become more difficult for the incoming nucleophile to come to the close vicinity of the antibonding and initiate the reaction so if the degree increases then SN2 rate of reaction decreases but if the degree increases then it becomes more stabilizing for the carbocation that is formed in SN1 so SN1 reaction will increase right the other factor would be nucleophilicity now nucleophile does not appear in RDS of SN1 as we have seen because in SN1 there is only solvolysis substrate breaks when it is broken in the second step nucleophile come in so in the RDS nucleophile is not there in SN2 there is only one step then the nucleophile comes in and simultaneously the living group goes out the nucleophile is present in the RDS if you have more amount of nucleophile then the rate of reaction will increase now I don't know if you have an idea of this or not if you have studied chemical kinetics then you must be catching me very fast in case you don't have studied chemical kinetics now this thing may be a little bit of bane for you because uh, I'm telling you if something does not is, is not present in RDS then that will not affect the rate of reaction now it may be very natural for you for some of you it may not be very natural in case you haven't studied chemical kinetics now if you haven't studied chemical kinetics then go and study chemical kinetics because anyway you have to study it so the better the, s the sooner the better but I'll give you a little bit of hint or I'll give you a little bit of explanation why this should be so because uh, uh, suppose I'll give you a very small example suppose there's a, there's a cycle factory then cycle factory have different units and different units manufacture uh, different parts suppose one of the one of the unit manufacture handle handle for the cycle the other of the unit manufactures paddle the paddle for the cycle and for the simplicity rest le le let's assume that the third unit manufactures the rest of the part the carrier the chain the whatever suppose uh, the handle unit manufactures 100 units in one day the paddle unit manufactures 90 units and the rest of the part the third unit manufactures only 50 of the rest of the part so at the end of the day suppose they have to assemble those different parts and get ready with a complete set of uh, a fixed uh, uh, cycle or the, a complete set of cycle fixing different units together so at the end of the day how many cycles will be they able to produce out of the factory now the rest if even if you have 100 paddles the rest of the part is only 50 so if the rest of the part is only 50 then at the most you can have only 50 cycles out of the factory 50 of the handles will be left out without any use and 40 of the paddles will be left out they cannot be incorporated to build up a cycle right so the, the unit which is the slowest in manufacturing that will actually govern how many cycles will move out of the factory on that day so the slowest unit will determine the rate of production of bicycle similarly in the reaction the slowest step determines the rate of the reaction suppose there are three steps involved the first steps take place very quickly in microseconds the second step takes place even more quickly in millis in, in nanoseconds but the third step takes considerable amount of time it takes one hour that even though first and second steps are very fast in if you don't cro cross the third step then you won't get the product so the slowest step is uh, or, or, or suppose let the first step takes very fast in microsecond the second step uh, take huge amount of time one hour and the third step again takes place very fast only one millisecond or mi one microsecond or one nanosecond so even the first step and third step are taking uh, car being carrying uh, being being carried out very fast the second step becomes a bottleneck in the whole process so if you do if the s actually the second step will decide the rate of reaction 
because the first step and the third step are quick enough so the most of the time will be taken up in the second step and it will be governed by the second step what should be the rate of reaction so the slowest step decides the rate of the reaction right that so we know now we know that rds is the slowest step so rds will decide the rate of reaction all right now something if it is not present in the rds then if that step in which it is present is obviously faster than the rds so rds suppose rds takes for the sake of understanding suppose the rds takes 1 hour and the other step in which that nucleophile is present takes place in 15 minutes all right now you are increasing nucleophile or nucleophilicity now if you are increasing increasing nucleophilicity then this time this time will further decrease from 15 minutes suppose if you add a harder nucleophile it may become 5 minutes right but this 1 hour will remain 1 hour because in this step nucleophile is not participating so increasing the nucleophilicity or decreasing the nucleophilicity is not going to alter the time of rds because in rds nucleophile is not involved so now effectively if you look at the time again it will be 1 hour because this thing will be happening in only 5 minutes and then it have to wait unless this 1 hour thing has been completed so after 1 hour both will be completed and you can have the required amount of product so that's why if nucleophile is not involved in the rds then it will not alter the rate of reaction all right now uh, nucleophilicity since in sn1 nucleophile is not present in the rds so sn1 is not going to change sn1 is not going to change the rate via sn1 mechanism is not going to change if you are altering the nucleophilicity but in sn2 nucleophile is involved in the rds so if you if you if you if you increase the nucleophilicity then the, that step will take faster and that step is a uh, rds and if rds takes faster takes takes place faster then that will increase the rate of reaction so rate of reaction will be increased if you increase nucleophilicity then we come down to leaving group now leaving group is present in the substrate and the substrate is there in the rds of both the reactions in sn1 leaving group have to move out in sn2 also leaving group have to move out and that is the rds in both the reaction so if if you if you increase the leaving ability of the leaving group then both sn1 and sn2 rate will increase because it is involved in the rds of both the reactions next comes solvent now solvent has the great role to play in both the reactions uh so if it increase the polarity or let's write it as polarity of solvent if you talk about polarity of solvent and if you increase polarity of solvent then the sn1 rate will increase drastically because if the polarity is greater and the solvation will be more more amount of energy would be released and quickly that bond can be broken down so quickly you'll get the product so rate of reaction will be more if you have greater polarity if you increase the polarity of the solvent then here the nucleophile will be more bounded due to solvation as we have already discussed in case of sn2 and that will decrease the rate of reaction for sn2 all right but you, if you decrease the polarity then the sn1 will decrease and rather sn2 will increase so these two four factors generally you have to deal with and this will be the comparison between sn1 and sn2 so bearing this in mind you will be able to solve the problems that will be seeing uh, henceforth so to have a grip over this sn1 let's solve some trivial problems dealing with sn1 so again uh, let's try to arrange this given substrate let's try and arrange this given substrate in the order of decreasing rate of reaction for sn1 mechanism now uh solvents are same uh, and the nucleophile would be the same leaving group is are the same when we come down to the degree of the carbon and the degree of the carbon is more than the 
stability of the cation that will be formed in the RDS will be more and hence the rate of reaction will be more. The most stable carbocation that will be formed will be in case of 3 degree because of more amount of hyperconjugating effect. So this, this substrate, this 3 degree butyl uh, chlorine or cl uh, chlorobutane uh, would be uh, having highest rate of reaction in case of SN1. And then the 2 degree will be more stable than 1 degree and that would be more stable than 0 degree. So this will be the order of reaction via SN1 mechanism. Had it been SN2, it will be just reverse because in SN2, the degree is a hindrance. It creates unnecessary hindrance for the nucleophile to come in and dole its electron into the orbital anti-bonding orbital of the carbon. So, But in this case, these methyl groups, in case of SN1, these methyl groups act as stabilizing groups instead of creating hindrance. That is evident from the mechanism. Hence, this will be the order.